हरि ओम अजम निर्विकल्पम निराकारमेक अजम निर्विकल्पम निराकारमेक निरानंदमानंदमद्वैतपूर्ण निरानंदमानंदमद्वैतपूर्ण परम निर्गुण निर्विशेष निरीह पर ब्रह्म गणेश भजेम पर ब्रह्म गणेश भजेम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम नमस्ते वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू दिस सेशन हंड्रेड ऑफ भगवद गीता वॉज बाय वॉज फ्रेंड्स वेर इन द मिड्स ऑफ चैप्टर थर्टीन टुडे we will take up verses 16 to 20 of this chapter in these verses we are going to see the parabrahma swarupa who is responsible for creation maintenance and dissolution we will also try to understand prakriti and purusha we will have chanting of these verses at the end of the class now i request timothy chetana to give a brief recap of verses we studied in our previous session after which we will have the introduction of the day's topic by dr hikbesa ओवरटीन where god is the end and not the means this devotee remembers god even when engaged in worldly transactions this is ananya bhakti vivikta desha sevitam seeking solitude seclusion introduces us to us where we face our problems otherwise we try to escape through various diversions solitude also exposes us to a sense of loneliness so we need to learn to enjoy solitude arati has jana samsadi not getting lost in the company of people this does not mean that one should hate others company but one should not get addicted to it then in the next verse krishna gives the last two values but one of the most important ones tattva gnanartha darshanam tattva gnanartha means the benefit of gnanam the more one values spiritual knowledge the more importance one gives to gnana yogyata just as a student interested in higher studies is willing to do whatever is required to be eligible for it and the last one adhyatma gnana nityatvam this means systematic and consistent study of vedantic scriptures that is shravanam while other virtues prepare the mind shravanam produces the knowledge so preparation and production of knowledge go hand in one hand in hand now from verses 13 to 19 krishna takes up the fourth topic neyam so what is neyam neyam is that which is to be known by everyone it is the same as kshetragnya everyone must know the subject matter because it solves a fundamental problem of every human being the sense of insecurity and the fear of mortality and the only medicine for this is self knowledge krishna says he will speak pravikshami about the param brahma or the absolute the infinite which is free from the three limitations of time space and attributes it is anadimat having no beginning or end it is limitless and is neither the cause asat nor the effect sat therefore brahman is beyond the realm of cause and effect so in the following verses krishna introduces Bra- introduces brahman as the existence consciousness principle so we get the essence of the upanishads over here so the teaching in the 14th verse is that brahman is the ex- the existence principle pervades everything one cannot think of anything that is not existent vedanta calls this existence which is intangible invisible and ab- abstract as brahman from which the whole creation is made but we assume that the world is the substance 
and the word existent is the property. According to uh, Shastras, the adjective existent reveals the substance just as the word golden reveals the substance of the bangle. Therefore, existence is not a property. Vedanta calls the word existent as Sat Brahma. Thus, existence is not an attribute of an object, but it is the fundamental absolute substance. Therefore, the world is not a substance at all. It is just names and forms of this basic substance existence. Just as the base of Mangal is a particular name and form of gold. <clears throat> Similarly, when you are experiencing the world, you are experiencing the basic substance existence. This existence is Brahman. Now, can one experience pure existence? No. Existence can never be experienced by itself in the pure form. It must be associated with an object in order to be experienced, like man is, tree is, etc. When one removes all the names and forms, only pure existence is left behind, but the sense organs can never experience pure existence. In chapter 6 of Chandogya Upanishad, the teacher says that one can never experience pure existence because it is not an object of experience. It cannot be ob objectified because it is the subject you, the witnessing consciousness. Names and forms are objects of experience. If all the objects are removed, only the subject you is left. So Krishna continues in the next verse by saying that the sense organs reveal Brahman along with names and forms all the time. The problem is that one is distracted by names and forms and therefore fail to recognize existence in them. Brahman is in everything, but the Nama Rupa distracts us from this principle. Pure existence can never be understood. So Krishna here uses a unique teaching method called Adhyaropa Apavada Nyaya to explain this existence principle. Taking the well-known hand example of Swamiji's, pure light is difficult to conceive because it requires a medium to prove its existence. So first, the teacher will introduce the hand under the light. One will notice only the hand and not the light. Explain to him that he is able to see the hand only because of light. It is also clear that there are two different entities here, the hand and the light. Then withdraw the hand so that he can focus on the light. This light, because of which the hand was visible, continues to exist even when the hand was removed. So applying the Adhyaropa Apavada principle, introducing the hand is called Adhyaropa. Removing the hand after the light is introduced is called apavada. Similarly, understanding the existence with the world is adhyaropa. Then dismissing the world and becoming aware of the existence principle is apavada. So in this verse, Krishna uses the same principle. He says, you appreciate Brahman through the world. Sarvendriya gunabhasham adhyaropa. But at the same time, Brahman is free from the world. Sarvendriya vivarjitam. Apavada. Brahman supports everything. Sarva brit, But at the same time, existence is free from objects of the world. Asattaha. It is unattached. Brahman is associated with the properties. But the properties are not intrinsic nature of Brahman. Nirguna. For example, when there is fire in a movie, the screen is not affected by the fire. Thus, in conclusion, Krishna says, you are experiencing Brahman every moment, but we are absorbed in the names and forms and lose sight of this fundamental truth. Therefore, we require a sensitive and subtle intellect to appreciate that existence principle. That existence consciousness is Brahman and that Brahman you are. Tattva Masi. Haryom, thank you. Thank you, Chetana, for an excellent recap of the verses we studied in the last class. And a good listening of whatever you spoke will be a good introduction.
for the verses that we are going to study in the most difficult part of the 13th chapter and perhaps the most difficult part of the entire Bhagavad Gita. Sadashiva Samarambam Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Pariyantam Pande Guru Paramparam Om. Each time I utter these Guru verses, I cannot express the kind of gratefulness to our Acharyas, Swami Paramarthananda Ji in particular, for giving us the insights to be able to understand these very subtle verses and to be able to share with all of you. This particular section of the 13th chapter deals with the topic called Nayam. Nayam means something worth knowing. Why is it worth knowing? Because if this is known, we attain to immortality. We already, already know that even God cannot make an immortal person, cannot make a mortal person immortal. Then what is this immortality that we are trying to achieve by studying these verses of the 13th chapter? Clearly it is this. Mortality is part of my ignorance. Because of the avarana shakti of maya, I forget my true nature. I identify with my body-mind complex. And with the identification of the body-mind complex, I suffer from samsara. And therefore, Sri Krishna wants us to make that radical shift from shetram to shetragnya. And this is possible through neyam yattat pravakshyami. Yet jnatva amritam ashnute. I will teach you something. Please listen. But then there is a problem. What is the problem? Sri Krishna is trying to introduce to us ourselves, which is none other than Atma or Brahman, which is certainly cannot be described in words. Words cannot describe something which is limitless. And therefore, we have words from the Upanishads like yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasasa. As far as Brahman is concerned, both the words and the mind are not able to express it nor able to comprehend it. Brahman is considered to be, we have to understand two things. If these two English words are understood, Maybe, or hopefully, the, these verses that we are going to study in the 13th chapter, we will be able to understand. One word is called immanent. Immanent means something that is very close to me. Not only totally close to me, it is not only on me, it is inside me, it is outside me. It is something very, very proximate. And one example is space. Space is outside. I can appreciate the space outside me. I know there is space inside me. There is space in and through every part of me. And yet this space is transcendental. Transcendental means if anything happens to my body, anything happens to my mind, space is unaffected whatsoever. And this is what is called the asangatvam nature. And Brahman being of a higher order of reality cannot be affected. The usual example is given of the movie screen, which is the Adhara, which supports the movie and yet unaffected by everything. So we have a problem. The problem is teachers want to explain about the great understanding that they have got from their teachers, but words cannot express. But then we know that poetry can convey something which words cannot convey. Poetry can convey certain, not only emotions, emotions are very beautifully conveyed by poetry, but Krishna is trying to use some beautiful poetic words. And uh, that is why we need to have a different kind of a mind that is able to understand about Brahman, because Brahman does not have any qualities. If you have any qualities, words can describe. Brahman does not do anything. Something infinite does not move. Brahman is akarta. There is any movement you can describe. And there is no comparison to Brahman. 
So these are the problems with words. Yet teachers are able to convey. Now, in this series of verses, which are looking like paradoxical, see, in the domain of Vedanta, which comes under the domain of knowledge, all these verses be something that has to be clearly understood and it has to be lived. And if it is paradoxical, paradox is something that cannot be understood. So teachers give us a wonderful drishtanta, a wonderful example. But remember, an example is an example. How to give an example of something that is a creator, sustainer, and dest destroyer, and something that is all pervasive? See, we have to understand what is this existence, Brahman? And uh, the scriptures call this sarvam kalvidam brahma. Everything is brahma. The example given is the example of dream. All of us are very good creators of dreams. We create a wonderful dream world. We create so many objects in our dreams. We create so many persons in our dreams. We create our own body in our dreams. And our body begins to interact with other bodies and it travels around the world. So every object that you see in your dream world is none other than you, isn't it? Now, if you are able to get that dream example, and at the same time, anything that happens to the dream, although it is imminent, it is transcendental. Transcendental means if something bad happens, you may wake up from your sleep, but nothing happens to you. So that is how, uh, with this background, let us look at these verses. The opening verse, as I said, I'm preparing you for certain paradoxes. Pani, please. Harihom Shri Guru Bhyonamaha. The verse is Bahirantascha Bhutanam Acharam Charam Evacha Sukshma Tvatada Vigneyam Durastam Chanti Kechatat. So in this verse, Shri Krishna is talking about that Gneya Vastu, the Brahman, whose nature is pure existence, consciousness. Bahirantascha means Bahihi is outside and Anta is inside. Bhutanam is all living beings or bodies. So Bahirantascha Bhutanam means the existence consciousness Brahman exists both inside and outside the bodies. So let us understand with, with an example. As Mrs. Chetana also said, we'll take the example of the hand. So when I keep my hand like this, you can see my hand because of the light illuminating this hand. But we never give importance to the light, as she said. So the light illuminating this hand is called as a Vyakta Prakashaha. But there is light all around my hand and behind my hand also. This light is not seen. The light manifests wherever the object is there. So if I keep another hand next to it, then this hand is also seen. So the light which is in between in these two hands is called as avyakta prakashaha. So the light, ma light uh, manifests wherever the object is there. Similarly, the consciousness manifests wherever a body is there. So it is in the body, outside the body, in between the bodies also. So this Brahman is not limited by the boundary of the body. So we have to remember that. So we say Brahman is outside and inside of all the bodies and is, it is also in mobile and immobile objects. So here, the next sentence is Acharam Charam Mevacha. So Brahman is both moving and non-moving. So if Brahman is moving, then it cannot be non-moving. So vice versa. It is a contradicting statement. So we have to understand this very clearly. The Gneya Vastu Brahman is actually non-moving, but it appears to be moving, that is seemingly moving when the medium moves. So we'll understand this with an example. So Swamiji gives here two examples. One is sunset and sunrise. The sun is stationary, as we all know, and the earth moves around the sun. The movement of the earth is transferred to the sun. So the attributes of one is transferred to the other. Because of the movement of the earth, the sun appears to rise and set. One more example Swamiji gives is that of a lighthouse. So when we see a lighthouse, we see three beams of light moving. 
But in reality, there is only one light, which is stationary. But there is a device around this light with three holes. So when the device moves, we feel that the light, one stationary light, is moving and which has three beams. So this A come, that one light becomes three beams, so becomes an A come, and one stationary light becomes moving. So acharam becomes charam. Similarly, Brahman is acharam, that is non-moving. Because it is all pervading, it cannot move also. But it appears to be moving because of the movement of the reflecting media. So we saw Brahman is outside and inside of all the bodies and it is immobile and immobile objects also. So it is all pervading. So if it is everywhere and if it is all pervading, why cannot we comprehend it or why cannot we see it? So Krishna says in the next line, it is Sukshmatvat. Sukshmatvat means, means it is very, very subtle. So Brahman is without attributes. Therefore, it is Avignana. It is extremely difficult to comprehend. If the attributes are more, we can comprehend it easily. If the attributes are less, it is difficult to understand. So let us consider the example of Panchabhotas. Prithvi is the grossest. So it can be recognized by Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Ganda. Apaha is water, which has four attributes. Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa. Agni fire has three, which is Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa. Vayu, two, it is Shabda and Sparsha. Akasha space has only one attribute. That is Shabda, the echoing capacity. So since Akasha has only one attribute, it's very difficult to comprehend. But we are talking about Brahman, which is attributeless. So it is very subtle than Akasha, subtler than Akasha. So therefore, it is very difficult to comprehend. Next, Durastam. So Durastam is what? It is very far. Antike is near. So Bhagavan Shankara says, for a person who has not acquired all the values which we had discussed earlier, and who is not ready, and whose mind is not pure, who has a distracted mind. For him, Brahman appears very far, that is Durastam. But for a person whose mind is prepared, who is a wise person, who has proper qualities, it is very clear as daylight. daylight. It is Antike. So it is very near. It is nearest. Because what we are looking for is so near to us, it is I, myself. The subject, the seeker, is seeking himself. Hari Om, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vani, for trying to give as clear an explanation for a seemingly paradoxical verse. How can something both be inside as, as well as outside? Something that can be near, something that can be far, something that is not moving at the same time that is moving. But then as you gave us that lighthouse example, the sunrise sunset example, Brahman itself cannot move, but because of the medium, we get an idea of movement. You will see from these examples that Sri Krishna borrows so many of the Upanishadic ideas. And this is a verse, the fifth verse from the Isha Vasi Upanishad, which, which says, Tadejati Tanejati. It moves, it does not move. Tad dure, it is very far. Tad antike, it is very near. That means for those who know about Brahman, it is so proximate, it is themselves. But for those who do not know Brahman, it is so far. Tad antarasya sarvasya, it is within everybody, just like space, which is all pervasive. It is outside everyone too. So the next verse, Dr. Sachin, please. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Hari Om. We are in that portion of this chapter which describes the existence or Sat Rupa Brahma. As we saw last verse, where it mentions it is outside and within, it is unmoving and moving, and it's far as well as near. As it is very subtle, it's difficult to comprehend. So we have to agree that this Sat or existent Rupi Brahman is very difficult for those mortal being, for those who don't understand, and for those who understand and have realized it's far ne very near. Let's see further what is explained in the next slide. Uh, sorry, in this slide, the verse goes, 
अविभक्त भूतेषु विभक्त स्थित भूत भर्तृत्म The meaning is as we see in the next slide. Krishna says cha stitham. Moreover, it remains avibhaktam, divided, undivided, and yet vibhaktam, as if divided in all beings. Tad meyam, that Brahman is Prabha Vishnu, the Creator, Grashishnu, the Destroyer, and Bhuta Bhartra, the Sustainer. Let's see in the next slide with examples to understand this concept better. Here Krishna is trying to elaborate on Mayam or the Akhanda Brahman portion. Remember the example of light and which falls equally, constantly and uninterruptingly in all directions from the original source. As we know the entire universe consisting of so many planetary systems and it is being lit by the single source, the sunlight. Let's take a similar example to understand this existence, Satrupa Brahman, further in details in the next slide. The Akhanda light which falls on our hand. We see the hand, the fingers getting illumined separately, but in reality, the light was always present. It's the medium, that hand, which made us, our senses perceive this light, ever existing light. Now we have another concept that the light falling on all the five at one time, it is just that there is a gap between these two fingers and there is no medium to reflect the light. So apparently it's divided. So the vibhakti is explained and also we understand that light is indivisible yet apparently it looks divisible for a normal mind. So does the Brahman which here is Nayam is all inclusive, everywhere, non-divisible, existent portion. Further, in the last slide, we see the function of such an indivisible Brahman. The sole cause of such an existence is to have Shrishti Stiti Laya Karma, which is explained in the second lines of the verse, that is, first you start with Prabha Vishnu, the creator. Then, the Bhuta Britar, the sustainer, and Grashishnu. That means every creation will be requiring pruning or dissolving itself. The destructor is called as Grashishnu. This understanding about the all inclusive Brahman is called Tat Neyam. Hariyo. Thank you, Dr. Sachin. That was a nice explanation. Again, with nice slides to explain a very paradoxical verse. The paradoxical verse you nicely explained, Abhi Bhaktam, that which is indivisible or also called Akhanda, appears to be divided because all of us manifest Brahman. And if we don't understand that there is Brahman in between me and another conscious being. So Brahman is all pervasive and Bhuta Brath, that means Brahman is the sustainer, Grashishnu, the one who, and Prabha Vishnu, the creator. Just like when we dream, we are the creators, we are the Prabha Vishnu, we are the Bhuta Brath, we sustain the dream. And when we wake up, Grashishnu, the whole dream resolves into us. We have now, the concluding part of this, see how in all these verses you will see, verse 15 or 14 started with Brahman in the form of existence. Now we will see Brahman in the form of consciousness. Dr. Kiran, please. Haryom, Gurubhyo Namaha. Osho famously describes Brahman as Infinite are his glories, infinite are his forms, infinite are his names, yet infinite names fall short of describing. Even Lord Krishna struggles to describe this concept because this is so difficult and inconceivable. In Keno Upanishad, it is said as it is cannot be conveyed but my guru has conveyed it somehow. And 
same way I will convey it to you. Brahman is described with positive lakshanas as sarvagataha, sarva indriyani, etc. At the same time with negative lakshanam like nirguna, nirvikalpa, etc. He is also described as chit, the existence and sat, the consciousness. It comes to us, is it conceivable, such a form, such a thing? Next slide, please. Yes, it is possible. How? It is prescribed as akasha dhyana or meditation. We will think about space. Space is not something which exists in between the fingers or uh, you know, in between chair and table, etc. Think like an abstract drawing, this painting, this old space is there and in the space is this table, chair, everything is located. So this old world and the universe is located in the cradle of the space and Brahman, in the cradle of Brahman is the space itself located. This is how we have to conceive it. Next slide, please. In this verse, that is verse 18, Lord says, Jyoti Sham Api Tad Jyoti Stama Paramuchyate Jnanam Gneyam Nhanagamyam Rudi Sarvasya Vishitam. It is the light of all lights. It is beyond ignorance. It is knowledge, object of knowledge, goal of knowledge, and present in art of all. This is perhaps the capsule of the gnayam which we are knowing. Next slide, please. Swami Paramatananda has very famously described Sat and Chit. Consciousness Sat or uh, consciousness Chit is described as it is not product, part or pa property of body. Consciousness is an independent en entity which pervades and enlivens the body. Let us learn further with this as the key. Next slide, please. Krishna describes consciousness using a special word used in Upanishad, Jyotisham Api Jyoti, that is the ultimate illuminator or enlivening principle in, from, taken from Mundaka Upanishad, Do Jyotisham Jyotistat Yadatamo Vido Vidu. Next slide. What is this light of all lights? It means that in whose presence everything becomes known. Like in Ken of Shad, sir has described eye of the eye, ear of the eye, ear of the ear. To know anything, we require the object, the knower, and the instrument or the pramana. Once if the eye is taken as the instrument, the sense organs, then ultimately what knows the eye? It is the mind. It is very... My child was showing me, hey, next one, uh, ice cream shop is there, get me an ice cream. I said, when this natural ice cream opened, it was there since long time, he thought. It was there, I've seen it, but it had not occurred to me because my mind was not on it. Ultimately, it is the consciousness which blesses in them all. Sun, moon, all the lights become meaningful only when the consciousness or enlivening principle is there. This is called the light of all lights. Next. Param tamasa uchyate. The light with which you can illumine or even darkness. That is, we know and also next step is, I know I don't know. I know English, but I don't know Chinese. And there is something beyond this which is called as, I don't know that I even don't know. How I know that this awareness principle which makes it no even in darkness that is as sir has told when we get up from deep sleep who is that person who has sustained and made me aware that i have slept well this is the ultimate illuminator nanam neyam nanagamya this satchit brahman alone is in the form of everything and ultimately this alone exists and just like how, you know, small baby will be there and it when we play hide and seek, closes the eyes and you say, hey, I can't see you, it giggles. Like that, we in reality refuse to see this God even though he is there everywhere. Once we open the real eye, that is the knowledge eye, 
we can see this God more powerful or more real than any sun or any object. So this knower, the ultimate me is Brahman. The knowing instrument is also Brahman. The object is also Brahman and the destination ultimate sadhyam is also Brahman. Next slide. And this is, where is it located? It is located Saryasya Ridhi Vishitam. That is, here Ridhi means mind. I recognize within myself as the ultimate knower of everything. It is recognized as I, you, and in between I and you. That is, the consciousness is the thought Vritti Bhava and Abhava Sakshi, that is witness of presence and absence. That is the real am in I am and I am not. This is the Nayam Brahman. And this is the real me, Atma, that is the Kshetragnya in micro level and Nayam Brahma, that is at the Paramatma level. Here, uh, Lord Krishna describes this from a very important concept of field and the knower. That is why this particular chapter is often called as Jewel of the Crown. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kiran, for a nice explanation of a key verse. The entire Nayam section of the Bhagavad Gita is important. And this particular verse, verse number 18, is something worth remembering. Each word of it, every word has been described. And of course, there are so many Upanishadic verses which are the sources of this particular verse. Uh, I will touch on Jnanam, Neyam, Jnanagamyam. Jnanam means knowledge. Neyam is that which is worth knowing. Jnanagamyam is the object of knowledge. What is the object of knowledge? I want to attain Parama Purushartha. I want to be free from all suffering. Is to be able to describe I mean, is able to dis discover that knower who is existing there within you. Jyoti Sham Api Jyoti and uh, Tamasaha Param, very nicely explained again by Dr. Kiran. What do you mean by Tamasaha Param? Light cannot illumine darkness, but the light of consciousness can illumine what I do not know. I do not know, let us say, Russian. But I know that I do not know. How do I know? So that knowledge which illumines ignorance. Uh, we will be studying this verse again in the Mundaka Upanishad. Kiran mai pare koshi verajam brahma nishkalam tach brahm jyoti sham jyoti. So this is one source. There is another beautiful mantra which every time when an arti is being done, Na tatra suryo bhati na chandra taraka nema vidyuto bhanti kutuya magni. More than the sun, moon, electricity, or uh, uh, stars, thvameva bhantam anubhati sarva. It is the light of my consciousness which illumines everything. And let us be aware of it. We now come to a very nice conclusion. And Nilima, can you give us the concluding verse? Jai Gurudev. 19th verse. Iti kshetram tata jnanam neyam choktam samasataha mat bhakta etat viknyaya mat bhava yopa padyate. Meaning, thus kshetram, jnanam, and neyam have been taught briefly. Knowing this, my devotee becomes fit to attain my nature. This verse follows the concluding remark for the theme discussed so far about Kshetra, Neyam and Jnanam. Having this knowledge, one attains liberation. Topics discussed so far is Kshetram, matter or a field which aids to exhaust one's Punya and Papa and attain liberation. And Kshetragnya or Neyam which ought to be known conscious principle and jnanam, virtues, which qualifies individuals for attaining the knowledge. Now, uh, this Lord says, Chokta, Choktam, I have taught you Arjuna, Samasataha, briefly. This knowledge is offered only to the true devotee, Mat Bhakta. This, in fact, even only uh, at the end of the 18th chapter, we see Krishna gives a warning only to a 
devotee, this Gita can be taught not to any non-religious person. Na bhaktya kadachana idam vachya. One of the conditions to gain the self-knowledge is one should be a devotee. Eta Vijnaya, my devotee will certainly know to discriminate between Kshetra and Kshetragna. And the fruit of this knowledge leads to freedom from Raga and Dvesha. So next slide. Mad Bhavaya Upapadhyate. Bhava here means Brahma Bhava, Purnatva. Seeker retains the same nature as the Lord who is ever free. With this uh, fruit of knowledge, individual becomes free from Raga and Dvesha as one sees the same conscious principle in all the fields of matter and developments. Lord says he alone is a true devotee fit to reach my state. Next slide. Previously, one considers himself to be a finite individual, but after the self-knowledge, he knows I am the all-pervading Brahma. Devotee becomes qualified to understand the truth. Purnatvam is a benefit of this knowledge as one realizes oneself as Achalam, Akhandam, Asangam and Sarvadaram. He knows all are existing in me alone. My Eva Sakalam Jatam, like all ornaments exist in gold or all waves in the water. Also, like all objects remaining in space or sunlight, never get tainted. So do Jnani Bhakta never touched with afflictions of the world. Mad Bhavayo Upapadhyate. Gaining this knowledge of Kshetram and Kshetagna, he will attain liberation. Thank you, Nilima, for explaining this concluding verse, uh, which Krishna says, Choktam Samasataha. Samasataha means briefly, just like we have SMS, Samasa. So Krishna is concluding the Gnayam section. He says, I have spoken to you about the Kshetra, which is the field of experience. I've also told you about that which is worth knowing about Nayam. And if you are able to understand this part, you are qualified to attain to my nature. Commentators have used this verse to bring in Anubandha Chatustaya. Anubandha Chatustaya is whenever a topic is being introduced, the teacher wants us to know four things. Who is the Adhikari? Who is eligible to know Brahman? Here Krishna says is Mad Bhakta. Therefore, you have to be a devotee. What is the topic that a Bhakta should know? Should have Jnanam, Nyayam, Jnanagamyam. Should be clear about Kshetra, Kshetragnya, Vibhaga Yoga. This is the topic. What is the prayojan Mad Bhava? You attain to that state which is my nature. You attain to the Atma Tattva. You are always there, but now you recognize that. And what is the Sambandha? You will be able to Vijnaya. You will be able to get this wisdom. We will come to a slight shift now. We come to the last pair of topics uh, which will be explained to us by Dr. Sheila, verse 20. Dr. Sheila, please. Hari Om, Sri Guru Bhyo Nabaha. The verse goes like this. Prakritim purusham chaiva vidyanadi ubhavapi vikaran shagunan chaiva vidhi prakriti sambhavan. Krishna has concluded four topics out of six in the last verse. From 20th to 24th, he will be discussing the final pair of topic that is Purusha and Prakriti. Similar type of pair that is Kshetram and Shetraknya, which is at Vesti level was discussed. Now he is discussing this at Samashti level. These two topics are closely connected and dealt simultaneously. The next slide shows the word meaning of each uh, meaning of each words. The next slide. Sir. We'll go to the next slide. The first line of the verse, Krishna begins saying, Prakritim Purusham Chaiva Vidyanadi Ubhavapi. Arjuna, may you know 
purusha that is consciousness brahman is also beginningless prakriti matter or maya is also beginningless so both are anadi we have been studying that is brahman is independent satyam and does not depend on maya for its existence maya is dependent it is mithya depends on brahman for its existence swami ji says carefully to note this if this is in case of existence and this is not in the scope of this verse so in this verse krishna is talking about creation or origination he says manifestation or evolution words are better used than words like creation and origination as nothing is created or originated now purusha and prakriti by themselves cannot cause anything therefore in the context of creation or manifestation they are mutually dependent both of them get the causal status because of the other only next they are the cause of universe but never the effect or product example earth is a cause with regard to ocean and earth is a, is an effect with regard to water similarly our parents are karyam from our standpoint but by themselves are karyam from the standpoint of their karanam that is grandparents thus generally everything is karanam and karyam whereas prakriti and purusha that is brahman and maya are kevala karanam never a karyam since they are never a karyam they do not have beginning at all anadi ubhavapi both are beginningless in the next verse that is uh, uh, shankaracharya uh, uh, in the bhashyam adds a very important note which is not in the shloka that is purusha and prakriti mixture alone is called ishvara which is beginningless principle and exist even before the origination of universe so to uh, uh, the next word, next slide so we have from this verse we get two common features on prakriti and purusha both are beginningless and both together cause the universe there are many uncommon features of purusha and prakriti few of them here are purusha is chetana nirguna nirvikara satyatvam prakriti is achetana saguna savikara and mithyatvam in the next slide we'll talk about the next second line of this verse that is vikarancha gunanam chaiva vidhi prakritim sambhavan vikara means change or transformation initially it is five basic elements are formed that is panchabhutas that is akasha vayu agni apaha and prithvi later these undergo various permutations and combinations all of them have three gunas that is sattva rajas and tamas originating from prakriti and flows down to all its products all koshas except anandamaya kosha all shariram except karana shariram are products of prakriti this includes even our body mind complex the three gunas which express um, as three mental status or condition are sukha dukha and moha comfort stress and confusion so karana gunaha karya anuvartante uh, the properties of the cause will inherit in the effect also example if the gold has got certain alloy even its products like bangle and necklace will have same proportion of gold and alloy prakriti gunaha prapancha anuvartante and also the world has got these three gunas prakriti sambhavan means all are born out of prakriti that is maya to conclude in the next slide consciousness that is purusha is also beginningless anadi prakriti that is matter is also beginningless which is anadi the mixture is called as ishvara ishvara is anadi all products as well as the experiences have evolved out of this mixture alone according to law of karma the products of panchabhuta and their involutes and their gunas are born out of prakriti while the purusha remains changeless thank you hari om sir thank you dr shila 
a nice explanation of the beginning verse of a new topic. From now on, we'll be studying what is Purusha, what is Prakriti, what is common among them, you have described that both of them are anadi, both together are the cause of the universe, they together form Ishvara. Then we worked on the differences, and one of the important differences are uh, Vikara. Vikara means Prakriti constantly undergoes various modifications. Now, uh, we are studying Disha also, that means when we are studying this chapter, the question could be, what are the Shad Vikaras? The six modifications are Asti, it comes into being jayate, it is born, vardate, it grows, viparimayate, it undergoes maturity, apakshyate, it undergoes decay, and finally, vinashyate. With that, we conclude today's class, and thanks to all the speakers who prepared so well for a wonderful class. Ritiksha, can you please chant the verses? Hariyom Sadgurubhyo Namaha. Bahirantascha bhuta nama charam charami vacha sukshmatvata da vigneyam turastam chanti ke chatat avibhaktam cha bhuteshu avibhaktam ni vachastitam bhuta bhartri cha tagneyam rasishnu prabha vishnu cha jyotishama pitaj jyotish ಪ್ರಕೃತಿಂಪುರುಷಂಚನಾಧಿಯುಭಾವಿಕರಾಂಶುಣಾಂಶ ವಿಧಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಸಂಭವಾನ್ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ತಿರೀಕ್ಷಾ ಫಾರ್ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡೇ ಫಾರ್ ಅನ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಟಿವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರೈಡೇ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಆಫ್ ಜೂನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಪುರುಷ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ತರ್ಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ before that on monday 6 june 22 let us be a part of next episode of the short pal at 6:45 pm until then hari om om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shante shante shanti hi Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om